Surprise! What have you always wanted in your body? I like M&M's. I like plane tickets, spinel, diamonds, kittens, lunchtime. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh my gosh! You guys are so awesome! <laughs> yeah. Oh, M&M's! Finally! Thank you so much! Fun fact is the month that we're filming this is the one year anniversary of our YouTube channel. So, we celebrate here on YouTube with colorful candy and colorful gemstones. I'm gonna just go out on a limb here. We've been talking about crystal structures and M&Ms are full of sugar and sugar is actually a cubic crystal system. Could this be cubic gems? Fluorite? Is it fluorite? One, two, three. Yay, I was right! This is really cool. This does not taste like M&M's. But I mean, it looks like the same colors. You know, I had a kind of a red M&M, a yellow, green. There's a little blue down here. This is really cool. You can wear fluorite. You can study fluorite. You can dream little dreams of fluorite sugar plums in your head. The first thing that drew my attention wasn't just the colors on this piece. You see this really cool banding? You know, not every gemstone does that. And that's why fluorite is probably one of my favorites. It's great color, interesting patterns. You can learn about fluorite, you can study fluorite, but I also do think fluorite has a huge presence, you know, maybe in home decor. For all you gem lovers out there, remember gemology isn't just a study. Gemology is to make your life a little bit more colorful. Every single time I see a piece of fluorite that looks like this, I am blown away that this is mother nature. We're gonna talk today with Elizabeth. We will do another episode of gemologists versus geologists and see which gem nerd prevails. Do you want M&Ms? I really I'm do. good. When we're done filming, I might have to take you up they're probably not gonna be around them. That is probably true. I'll take it right one. That's it? Yeah, I've had like half of the thing already. Elizabeth, did you bring this as a peace offering for today? I don't know about peace offering. If this is gemologist versus geologist, if I think you... I'm gonna win. Yeah. yeah. I've seen a lot of specimens of fluorite, but the really cool thing about this is that most of them are usually like green to purple or blue to purple or something in those lines when they're banded. But with this guy, we call it the rainbow slab for obvious reasons. So fluorite, the way that it's colored is really different than most minerals. It's like, oh, you have copper in it right. and that colors it. Well, with fluorite, because naturally it's either heated or radiated or it has some weird sized elements in it that are called rare earth elements, you actually have shifts in the crystalline structure that causes the light to diffract differently through the material. So each of these is still just calcium fluoride, but they're shifting in their structure so you see a different color. So it's not like there's iron staining it, which for some fluorides you can't have some iron in them. But so all these different colors that you all are seeing are actually tricks of the light, not necessarily an actual element in their chemical makeup that's making them do this. If I eat this, do I get fluoride? Make my teeth m and I don't know, you might break your teeth I on know, that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fluorine was named after fluorite because we didn't really know about the element when people actually discovered this. And the actual property fluorescence <laughs> peaking. <laughs> you... I should take your presence away. No, no, no. I should... You might have just gotten grounded. You can't ground me. You're the geologist. I can't ground you. Geologist can't ground. I'm a ground. geologist. Geo oh, did you get that? <laughs> did you get it? I got. She that's why I kept it. saying it. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can we just do the one, two, three thing? <laughs> can we just? You're so impatient today. I'm just really excited to see what's in this box. Well, there's like five boxes and one of them I'm is already you what, open. You talk all well, here. day about so, that. I will just, I'll go ahead and- Stealing my pieces. <laughs> so this is actually not a piece of fluorite. So that is part of the material it. that it actually grew off host of. Rock. And, that, and it's the host rock. Host Good rock. job. So that's why you see all these bands and they kind of radiate out from this one piece. So the as it grew- make you dance. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Well, you were peeking. You're not supposed to I peek. I want to see all the gems. Okay, so when you open <laughs> yours, turn your head away and then like just pull one of them out. Here. <laughs> so take the lid off and I'll just pick one eyes. or whatever. You're trying to. <laughs> now you can open. Oh my gosh, I love this little guy. He's adorable. <laughs> this is screaming, set me in a ring. Where does that red color come from? So the best we can tell is that it is more likely than not Swiss or at least Alpine fluorite. There's not a whole lot of colors in the world that are quite that beautiful pink. Look at the checkerboard cut there. And you kind of got that rectangular shape. I suspect that the crystal that this was cut out of was kind of in a more oblong shape, so they're trying to maximize the rough. I don't see too much of that checkerboard cut on the top. I've seen a lot of that in the pavilion. So that's what first drew my attention. And I would absolutely love to set this, I think like as a pair of earrings. 
things. That'd be really pretty, but I think a ring, because that, that yeah, piece is just so special. You don't hardly scale. ever see that color in fluorite, because for the most part, mineral specimens are what those are left as. So more likely than not, when the piece that came from was mined, it was probably broken and was unusable as a mineral specimen. You wouldn't be worried setting this in a ring, just the fluorite on the most scale is only... It's a four. Yeah, that's pretty So low. I would have it in a setting that it wasn't set up high and I would have all the corners protected and probably wear it more as a dinner ring, not an everyday ring. I don't think you see a whole lot of fluorite jewelry. I don't have any, do you? I don't have any, but it's actually becoming very popular. You can find a lot of fluorite gems stones that are in a lot bigger sizes and we'll see more of those here in a little while. Three, two, one. Hey! Oh, cool. Crystal structures. So, Let's fluoride is this. cubic. Diamond is cubic. Yep. Sugar. We love sugar on this channel. Spinels. What else is cubic? Fluoride. Well, we, we covered that. Pyrite. Pyrite, oh yeah, duh. I love pyrite. So this guy obviously is a yellow fluorite. Wow, look at the and backside. And so the backside, you can see some hints of purple back there. So that fluorite is from Illinois. Cave and Rock in Illinois is, I mean, absolutely world famous. You actually have different levels where you can find different colors and different patterns to the fluoride. So there's some that you have that are purple on the top, and then when you shine the light through the back, they're bright yellow. You have some that are a little more blue Bluish. You have some that are like tanzanite, purpley blue, and um, incredibly enough, so the black that's on this is actually hydrocarbon. So these are pretty much like dried oils. They naturally occur in the mine. It doesn't hurt the specimen at all. In fact, I think that kind of gives it a really neat story to go with it. Finding like these really bright yellow ones that don't have a ton of purple to them is a little bit harder. And it always amazes me that they can pull these things out and not just completely break them. <laughs> I'm grabbing the next one, ready? Okay. One, two. Okay. Okay, that looks like a topaz. It does, doesn't it? It does. We've got, this is a big It's color stone. change. Oh, do we have the right lighting over here to show it? I don't think we have a more yellow light, unfortunately. But it does color change, everybody. Trust us. We're experts. All right, so ready? Three, two, one. Oh, cool, that kind of matches. They do match. So this is a smaller version of what that rough would have come from. That piece probably came from a much larger non-crystalline slab. So it probably rough? came from something more like this. That's quartz. And then these guys were probably closer to the edges of the actual deposit. These crystal shapes are pseudo-cubic dodecahedrons. <laughs> so here on this guy, you see that it kind of sort of has an outline of a cube, but you can tell that all of the faces are actually altered. So truly, you know this is a dodecahedron that's trying to look like a cube. Coolest thing with this right here is the crystal shapes of the quartz. Perfect looking. These crystals of quartz are actually what I would call frosted across the top. So if you flip it over, you can see that you have the, like a smoky quartz underneath it. And then you have another growth of quartz that is opaque and is frosty. So this piece has a ton, a ton of stuff going on. It's also color change. If I was to take this in more of a stronger yellower light, like your incandescent bulbs, not your more blue LEDs, it actually goes a really pretty soft, really pretty purplish blue. Okay, you've seen the Harry Potter movies, right? Yeah. You know when Harry goes to Gringotts Bank and he like takes the elevator, you know, down. That's what I think that you do. I think that there's a green. I wish no, somebody pause. hook me up. I swear that we have something like that at JTV because I've never seen this piece or that piece. Blink if if that if Gringotts Bank exists here. Crap! Now I can't blink this whole time. <laughs> Laser eyes. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab my piece now. Do you have any more questions about these fluorites? Can I go? She just likes taking things out of boxes. I, I, I just, know. I love colorful But I feel items. like she's just like, go, 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 go. I don't think okay. we've ever had this many stones. No, we have not. Now we have- I'll put this over here because you're starting to get a good team and I need some teammates. You can have this back. I want, I want the Swiss. No, that's mine. Oh. Do you color. see why I picked it? Oh match my gosh, it. you match! Okay, so then you need to have this one. A lot of fluorite gemstones are cut as trillions. Do and you I know why? Maximize the rough. Yep, because... Well, Oxyhedron. There you go. There we go. So a lot of them that are cut because of the way that they cleave. Mm -hmm. So fluorite can cleave perfectly in four directions. And so a lot of times this is the best way to cut them from the rough because if you do it like this, you're maximizing it from your octahedrons. But from the front, you guys, can see that it is totally purple. It doesn't look like it from the back. But it's not. It is actually banded. 
Okay, never seen it that color. You haven't seen it this color? I don't, it looked black when you had it in there. That is really dark. I've seen the color. I don't think I've ever Isn't seen the saturation. Look at the back of it. It's That's colorless. Really wild. I've That's seen it cool. much more saturated where it really will, like the whole way through, it'll just appear as a super duper dark purple. But what I liked about this guy is that you can still get some light from the back. So it appears really bright, even though the surface of it's dark and it has that really pretty luster to it. This is another one that came out of Illinois. A lot of times when they come out of the same places, they look completely different. So colorless fluorite is really great for lenses if you are a scientist because it's singly refractive. So it doesn't distort light mm -hmm. horribly. So if you need something to be just super clear and have like zero distortion, you can use a fluorite lens. And I mean massive telescopes, like huge telescopes. They use like a five foot lens and it is fluorite. Don't ask me how they got the lens to be that big and it had no cracks or anything because I think that would have been really, really hard. <laughs> With fluorites in their colors, we call them color centers. If anybody's ever seen a ball and stick model, the sticks between the little balls that connect them, they're your bonds of your atoms. So when you get these color centers, you have a shift in those bonds and they cause a lattice to change a little bit. Not much, but just a little bit. A lattice is where you have the repeating structure of your fluorite, your garnet, your diamond, things like that. But it's a repeating structure that makes the overall shape of your crystal. You know, so you have your bonds and then you have just kind of free space that you can have your light pass through, your radiation can alter it and things like that. Okay, go. Okay, that looks like an emerald, but okay. I know it's not an emerald. So where have you seen that color before? The stuff that we had with Alan. Yeah, cool. so that is actually not from there. Totally different. That one does not fluoresce. You know, the one that I had with Alan, it looked almost a little bit more blue. Well, the reason it looked a little blue is not because of its color, but because it was fluorescing even in indoor light. Oh. So that flash of blue, it's so My fluorescent God. that it naturally gives off a little bit of a blue color. So that guy is from South Africa. Another so, place we need to pitch a trip to. Excuse me, that is Namibian. My bad, there's a lot of fluorite from South Africa, but Another it's not that go. quiet, quite that dark green. That is Namibian. That is honestly one of my favorite gemstones in the building. I love that piece. So, is this our last specimen? This is it. This is a really neat little fluorite from New Mexico. This guy is unique in the fluorite world. Most of them can fluoresce a whole lot of different colors, there's but this guy actually fluoresces white. No way. So it's, it's really neat. And unfortunately, with all the bright lights in here, tried to make it look fluorescent and nothing I had was strong enough. And we've got some iron staining there too, right? Yes, yeah, so we have a little bit of iron staining. And so the matrix it is on right here is actually something called barite. If you guys remember another video that we did, Desert Roses, yep. and it was barite. Looking at all of these colors, this it, is, the it color. is really crazy how many There's... colors fluorite can be. And this doesn't even touch what fluorite really can be, which it's is insane. Of. It really is the rainbow gemstone. Would you add fluorite to your collection? Oh, definitely. I have a few pieces of it. I don't. I, I wish I did. I think I'd love something like that. <laughs> you just don't poke things hard. <laughs> Just as I guess a little challenge. Find some fluorites online and tell us what your favorite color is and where they're from. Yeah, comment below and then maybe Elizabeth and I can pitch a trip to go to our favorite. I think the Alps would be good. I think the Alps would be great. deciding between this guy oh, and this oh. guy. So it's Friday. Yes. Freaky Friday today. The gemologist chose the specimen and the geologist chose the gemstone. Obviously though, we have not switched bodies because I'm Natalie's still talking about hunger is still here. We'll, <laughs> we'll be okay. We'll be, we'll be back next time. You need to like to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything gem-tastic. That was really that was rough. Get it rough. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> High five. High five. Like We're done. Subscribe. Like and subscribe. You don't want to miss out on what's coming up next. And comment below and let us know your favorite specimen or stone. And please, please, please tell your friends all about this channel. Bye. Adios. Bye.